Good morning, lovely people, or good afternoon. Welcome back to another recording from Marilon Tara Marilon Arts. This is my uh, fourth attempt to make this video. Yesterday, I had so many technical issues and it just wasn't happening. So I said to myself, okay, I have to leave it, sleep on it, wake up in the morning and do it again fresh and new. We have a lucky in the background. Look at him. He is beautiful just sitting there. He's hardly ever <laughs> indoors. So I'm actually quite pleased that I have to do this video again. So... Um, what I will be talking about today is the next um, important um, lunation. And we are talking about the new moon that will be happening in the sign of Taurus. So we have entered the Taurus season a few days ago. Um, the new moon will be on the 7th or the 8th of this month, depending on, no, on your location. Um, also, we have a Venus in Taurus, Saturn and Uranus. The other important uh, aspect uh, this uh, month, this couple of weeks, is Pluto is stationing retrograde in a sign of Aquarius, which is very dominant. I, I, I want to talk about this as well because they have the cards on the table uh, that is matching this energy a lot. So it's something... Uh, important uh, mentioning, and I'll uh, explain how this will affect us all. Alrighty, so um, I do have a surprise card for the end. Uh, this time I've seen the card, and the reason why I had a look already is because I find this Oracle deck quite personal. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually using it on recording. It's uh, called the Postcards from Spirits. So this is how it looks like. And uh, the message that we got uh, today uh, is like perfectly matching the theme that um, I will be talking about. So um, let's start from the top of the table. I have four major arcanas. Uh, here in the reading, which is quite significant, and I'll explain what that means when you have a lot of big energies in the table. But let's start with the star card. Um, I was talking about uh, that uh, energy that uh, retrograde uh, Pluto will uh, bring to us. And what does that mean, being in a sign of Aquarius, is like really taking the time to reflect on your hopes, wishes, and dreams. And what is it that you want to bring more of into your life and really dreaming big? You see, with the new moon energy, we should allow ourselves time to really sit down and take time to like go within and understand what is it that we really truly want. Uh, I'm sure that we all had that situation when you're like really uh, wanted to go for something or wanting something to happen. And then once it happened, you're like, oh, well, this is not really what I wanted. So you know how they say, uh, be careful what you wish for. It might actually happen. But the theme here is really allowing yourself time to, to go within. Um, the Aquarius energy is very much about authenticity, being true to yourself and showing up uh, out there uh, in that way. Uh, this is how we are the best version of ourselves and how we can serve others even in a better way and inspire others Um by, by, by doing so. It's a beautiful illustration from Musha's deck. It's very dreamy, like her holding that star uh, there. Uh, it's a beautiful illustration. There's a falcon in the back as well, and usually the falcon in Taro represents the vision. Strong air and water um, element here in Aquarius card. Being in touch with your feelings and emotions, but also being connected to your mind and allowing yourself to dream big. The next card I have on the table is the Justice card. The Justice card is the card of Libra, the energy of Libra, things falling into the right place. The sword in her hand represents the clarity of mind. The scale on the other side represents the fairness, the balance, moderation, things being done in the right way. 
even though we are dealing with the uh, new moon energies uh, this time, which are all about reflection, uh, going within, setting intention, it's more about the mind rather than the action, right? More about the ideas. We are getting out of uh, extremely uh, powerful, uh, energetically powerful season of the eclipses and that full moon in Scorpio. April has been very, very uh, charged month, very intense. Uh, from the conversation that had I had, uh, through the month and so on. I could see that everyone was going through it in a different way, but it was quite, quite intense. Uh, so what's happening now with all this major arcana that I was talking about, and you will see two other cards that I have here, there is a moment when we should uh, trust the process, uh, understand that there are things happening behind the scene, uh, how much can we invest ourselves, uh, how much action we can take to be where we want to be, but also understanding how much we cannot influence and there are things uh, that will be happening uh, without us being aware of that or being able to influence, right? Um, as like three days ago, we had like a major power cut here in the area, like 300 households were affected. And it's so interesting to see how these extreme uh, situations bring people together. Like the way that they handle it here, it was... A, absolutely amazing to see and you have that feeling of community and support which is amazing so you know like we are talking about uh, some karmic circles and lessons here we are still in that um, mercury retrograde shadow which will be we will be out of it on the 15th of may so we still have uh, a week or two to go through that and i can feel it big time like yesterday was an unbelievable day i was just like you know what i'm just gonna leave this today focus on other things and it's good i did it's good i did so uh, we have that like karmic cycles ending and beginning with, with, with big cards, justice, star. The next one I would like to talk about here is the tower, uh, falling tower. These cards did come up in a reverse, but I'll explain both meanings. And this is what I do usually when I do my readings. I usually place the card in the upright. So it's... Uh, more clear to understand the illustration and symbolism of the card, but then I would explain the energy from all the angles and then the person I speak to can actually understand and place it wherever it fits in a way rather than forcing or controlling outcomes. With the Tower card here, we are talking about a sudden change, needed change, uh, changes that we are ready for, but we don't know from where to start. There is that moment where all these walls that we built around us don't feel like safe and comforting, uh, comforting anymore. Uh, but opposite comforting yeah so you know there is that moment of uh, getting out of your comfort zone using the universe supporting you to be where you're supposed to be and giving you that little push right they do say the tower moment happens for us not to us in order to grow in order to be on the right path this could be internal change it doesn't necessarily have to be from the outside right the internal change you can um, notice within you and then other people around may feel like oh what's going on like why is this person different and why do you have different approach but this is really important and we have that authenticity theme here being true to yourself and doing things from the authentic place the next card the wheel of fortune uh, proper tarot card, I like to say. In one of my uh, decks, you have actually tarot written around that wheel. And what tarot means uh, in general is the circle, the cycle. And I like mentioning that. It is all about all the cycles we go through throughout our life. But what the Wheel of Fortune or Wheel of the Year is talking about is that shift that comes, ready or not. So we have quite... Uh, we have that theme of change here with both of these cards. Um, but this is very sort of organic. It's like leaving like winter season behind, being on the peak of a spring season. We had the, we had the Beltane yesterday, uh, which is also quite significant. It celebrates fire, it celebrates light, it celebrates life, right? Um, and moving forward, moving forward, uh, riding the wave, um, trusting the process, and there is that glory on the top of the card. It's number 10 at the end of the day. The 10 is the number of success, competition, and continuing the journey. If you notice that hand here, it's almost like that hand from the universe that it's really doing things in our favor. And I do believe that things are always happening for the best. Alrighty. So 
Other cards I have on the table, we have the Page of Swords. The Page of Swords is that idea coming in. It is that intuition. Well, it's more about uh, inspiration, right? And that first stage uh, for something to be created. Um, it's a fresh and new energy. It has a lot of potential to grow. Uh, the patience is required with this card. Uh, it does say here loyalty as well. Uh, which is being loyal to yourself. But you see with Taurus energy and Taurus season, uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus. Venus feels very comfortable there. Uh, we have the theme of joy, nurturing, uh, healthy connections, healthy relationships, uh, being in tune with all your senses and working with those as well and on those, indulging yourself in a healthy way, a self-care and a healthy ego and really allowing yourself time to spend time with yourself, by yourself, and work with yourself as well. Well, it's it's more in that nurturing sense, I would say. And it's like, how do I do it? You might get some new insights. You might get some new ideas on how to take the most of these energies. Talking about Taurus energy, we have three cards on the table in the element of Earth. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Ace of Pentacles. Once the idea comes in and you allow it to settle and work on it on your mind you take the action at some moment at some point and what happens you see that beautiful seed growing this is the moment when the idea becomes real this is when you start seeing it happening ace is number one the beginning the start pentacles represent everything material physical 3d right the next card in the element of earth is the eight of pentacles Taking your time to enjoy the, your craft, to work on things that gives you pleasure and joy, whatever it is, this could be like even, it could be the relationships, it could be connections, it could be your actual work, hobby, career, whatever it is that really makes you focus with that with pleasure rather than being forced to do it. And where this brings you is the Six of Pentacles, last tarot card I'll be talking about today. Beautiful illustration from Anna's deck. Um, even the feeling you get from this card with all these like little rainbow coins, it's it's beautiful, right? Number six is the number of su success, um, things moving forward, achievements as well. We still have that element of earth talking about pentacles. Six of pentacles is talking about being there for others being in place to uh, show up and care and share, but also knowing how to receive. If you're an empath, if you pick up a lot of energies from others, if you make sure that everyone is okay in putting yourself on the side, what might happen, you might feel drained, exhausted. So the advice, and each card has an advice, the advice of this particular card is that you are not able to give from an empty cup. And nurturing is important, uh, looking up to yourself and making sure you have enough for yourself. And when I say enough, this is not in a that egoistic way or controlling way or selfish way. Uh, and I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about uh, spiritual, energetical and so on. You have to be recharged and you have to be in a good place to show up for others in the best possible way as well. Beautiful. So let's finish the conversation with the message from the spirits. I'm going to read it for you. And this is literally, the. I'm sure that some of you will find this very, very useful. Uh, it very much uh, aligns with the Taurus themes as well and the new moon energies as well. There is you. We bet you must be so exhausted some days. Many of us feel exhausted after the eclipse season and the energies you went through these uh, last couple of weeks. Giving as much as you do, sharing your energy so beautifully in service to the highest good can leave you feeling depleted, like an empty well. If it feels, if there is no more water for you, the good news is we have a plan. Today, go take a relaxing bath, book a massage, read a novel, buy yourself flowers or plant some in your garden. This is exactly what I did yesterday. So all these things I, just, I plan to do and record the video and put it out there, it really made me feel like stressed in a way as well because I like told myself I have to do it. I have to like, it, it's also about the fair, being fair to yourself, not only to others, right? Uh, and nurturing yourself. Um, I was like, okay, 
obviously there is a message from the universe that I should leave these things on the side. It was the 1st of May, May Day, Beltine, a special day energetically. So I was like, okay, I'll just leave this for tomorrow. So this is exactly what this is talking about. Make time for self-care, not more work on yourself. Uh, by tending to yourself now, you're reminded to do some more often. And be sure to use a word that might have caused you anxiety in the past, but is essential for you, your well-being now. No. Say no with us. No, thank you. No, I can't. And I was thinking about this message even yesterday. Like sometimes we have to learn and understand how to say no to ourselves, right? Is that little uh, conversation that is happening in your head uh, when you can really like remind yourself, okay, I have control of this. I have control of my day. Uh, You do not have to explain. Just say no gently but firmly. Then go for a soak. Life will wait for you to bring yourself back to center, replenished and ready for more adventure. I can't uh, agree with this message more. Uh, So uh, I'll leave you with this. Um, I hope you have a good full moon. Uh, The month of May is going to be like way more gentle. Uh, there might be obviously challenges, there always are, but comparing to the past month, uh, you can expect things going way smoother and things get, uh, happening a light, in a lighter way as well. Um, I will be talking to you in a few weeks. I have some exciting events and trips uh, coming and happening, so I'll probably talk about these uh, after I'm back and in my next uh, recording. So have a wonderful new moon and month of May, month of May and I'll speak to you around the 23rd of uh, May when we are having our full moon in Sagittarius. I might be recording that video from Alta actually because I'll be there around this time. Sending you lots of love and best of luck.